Hey there, Jen here, and this is a happy bit. I say this is a happy bit, but really this is a dose of reality. I want to let you know that I have been a bit depressed lately. I know, right? I'm the host of the Vibrant Happy Women podcast, and I've been facing a bit of depression. Now, it's not terrible clinical depression, but it's definitely a lower mood. And I notice often I will feel almost physical pain in my heart area, like there's a weight there. How do we deal with this when it happens in our life? I'm going to get to that in a moment. But first, I want to explain why I think it's happening. I spent the past six months helping my boys, the oldest, Azale, and the second oldest, Ephraim, helping them get the help they needed to get out of the crowd they were in. And so they were both sent to a therapeutic wilderness program called Anasazi, which I mentioned last week in the happy bit, or a couple of weeks back in the happy bit. And now they're doing well. They're doing quite well. My oldest is enrolled in college. He went a year early. He went somewhere out west where it's sunny and he's doing well. My second oldest is in class and he's attending and he's succeeding. In fact, the head of the math department just emailed me and I often would get, you know, negative emails about him because he wasn't attending class a lot last spring. But this email said, Mr. and Mrs. Ride, I regret to inform you that your son is in the wrong math class. He needs to be in a higher level. He needs to be in advanced algebra. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm excited because, you know, good news. I need good news. I love it. So apparently my son scored really high on this practice ACT exam. And it makes me giggle because he is so good at math. And he hasn't applied himself at all. He missed so many classes last spring. And then he shows up first day of math class and scores out of the park on a math practice ACT exam. So anyway, super happy. It just made my day. But I have been struggling with my mood. And I think it's because I spent six months being the rock for our family, holding everyone together, insulating the younger four kind of against everything that was happening with their older siblings. So they weren't affected too much. Spending time with them. Um, my husband had crippling stress slash anxiety over those months. He was listening to guided meditations all the time. And I'm proud of him for the way he found to cope. But I ended up being the rock, the strong, strong, strong one. And there were times I was thinking, whoa, dude, I don't know how I'm still standing. This has been so hard. I mean, I am rocking this. I remember thinking that, and I was. <laughs> well, now my body's saying, hey, Jen, everyone's settling in. Now it's time for you to feel what you ignored for six months. And so I have waves of sadness just come over me, just sadness. Maybe it's grief for what happened, all the feelings I didn't have time to feel over those stressful six months. And so what does it look like? Some days I wake up feeling fine. Other days I wake up with almost this crushing pain in my heart area where I just feel like there's a weight there. It's so funny. And what does our body do in response to that? My shoulders contract. I want to curl up in the fetal position. It's almost like my body wants to protect that heart area and curl around it. So that's the physiology of depression. What are my thoughts? My thoughts are, Ugh, I don't want to do anything. Uh, one of the kids is knocking on the door. I better go answer it. Open the door and let them in. Oh, I have to make lunch. Do you hear the dialogue I've been using? <laughs> and then my focus. My focus tends to be on all the things that are wrong when I'm depressed. Even though my son's doing so well with the school thing, where does my focus go? Oh, He's still hanging out with these friends, even though he's not doing anything illegal or wrong and he's attending school. He's still having too much contact with these friends. So I still tend to spiral into the negative. So those three areas are part of a triad that can really help sway our mood. It's physiology, focus, and dialogue. So I've been doing the physiology and the focus and the dialogue of a depressed person. Tony Robbins says we don't have depression. We do depression. I agree sometimes, and sometimes I'm not so sure because I didn't choose to do this depression. It just seems to be coming on. Maybe my psyche is saying, hey, you need to feel this stuff. And so I'm trying to feel it and understand what I'm thinking and feeling without judgment. But at the same time, I don't want to spiral. So I'm working on my physiology, my focus, and my dialogue. How do I do that? Often when I'm depressed, I don't feel like exercising. 
That seems so hard when you're not motivated. But I am able to walk. I love being in nature. I've been taking walks every morning. I am able to wake up and have a protein smoothie. It's not hard. Dump the powder in the blender, add some water or almond milk, and I'm good to go. I have been able to take my vitamin D. So you kind of get to this place where you do the bare essentials, the things you know are going to boost your mood, and then you just hang on and slowly you start to spiral back up. So that's physiology, moving my body, focus, what's going to help me feel better? How can I connect with other people? How can I enjoy nature? Maybe even listening to music. When my focus is on those things, my mood brightens and then slowly we inch back up. And then dialogue, training yourself to see the good, seeing what's good, gratitude journaling, vision journaling, thinking about all the good things in your life that you'd like to see in the future. So all of these things combined can help you do happiness rather than doing depression, as Tony Robbins might say. Now, again, this is my experience. I'm not belittling anyone with chemical depression, but in my experience, we can slowly shift out of chemical depression just by doing these small things. So I want to challenge you, if you're stressed or anxious or worried or frustrated or sad, how can you change your physiology, your focus, and your inner dialogue to match the feelings that you have when you're happiest or calmest or most relaxed? What does that look like? I know for me, when I'm happy, my shoulders are back. I'm moving my body. My voice is animated. I'm just moving with more oomph and finesse. And there's a lot of movement involved. Movement makes us feel better. But just pulling the shoulders back, try it right now. Sticking your sternum up. Remember, that is the physiology of happiness and confidence. And the biggest way to shift your mood is changing your physiology. So exercise, move, pull those shoulders back and breathe deep into your diaphragm. Do you hear my voice change? Because I pulled my shoulders back now to emphasize that for you. I automatically start to feel it. It's amazing. So then your focus, focus on the things that you've done in the past when you were happy. Maybe it's music, dancing, eating well, spending time with people you love, calling them up. Just get yourself to do some of those things and it slowly shifts that mood back where you want it to be. And then finally, dialogue. Wake up, think of the things you're grateful for. Go spread some love and good cheer through words of affirmation. Think about all the good things you do and praise yourself and think good of yourself. And not only that, but see the good in others. And then we shift ourselves back out. Now, there's nothing wrong with feeling what you feel without judgment. Feel it to heal it. Sometimes we just have to feel it and that's okay. And sometimes we need a therapist to help us feel it and to be safe in that process. And that's okay too. And sometimes we even need to go the route of medication to help boost that mood just enough so we can start climbing back out of that pit. So that has been my experience, and I share that to let you know, hey, I am by no means always vibrant and happy, but the vibrant, happy journey is knowing you can shift your mood, knowing you can always shift back into a happier place, no matter what has happened, no matter what you're going through or feeling. Also, I wanted to remind you of my episode with Maria Paz, episode 117. She shared her story of finding the light after depression, and it's much it's quite similar to what I just shared with you. She started to take care of herself. She started to walk and she started to do the things that pulled her out of that pit back into the light. And so I hope this helps some of you. I would love to hear your thoughts and you can email me any thoughts on the topic at support at genride.com. Now on the last episode, I mentioned something exciting, something that can really help you shift your mood. And that is the Vibrant Happy Women Club is open for enrollment. Why do you need a club? The Vibrant Happy Women Club is a place where you say, hey, I'm going to take care of me. I'm going to feel what I feel and heal what I feel. And I'm going to shift my energy and my mood and my vibration higher and higher and higher. I love to share a guided meditation with all of the club members every week. And I love the community where we all say, hey, we're not victims of our circumstance. We can be happy no matter what and we help each other rise together. We empower each other. I also love the weekly get togethers we have every month where we discuss a theme more in depth, everything from time management to decluttering, to boundaries, to finding your purpose. And slowly we rise together. 
this is the vibrant, happy women movement. And sometimes you just need that identity and that focus to keep shifting yourself higher and higher and higher on that happiness scale. Well, thank you so much for listening to this happy bit. And if you would like to join us in the club where we're talking more about all of these things I just talked about, you can go to vibranthappywomenclub.com. We would love to have you. Enrollment is only open for another week and then the doors will close until spring of 2019. So get in while you can and start shifting your energy and your vibration and your mood all the way up that ladder. So you're living the life you want to live. You're bursting with happiness, showing your kids what a vibrant, happy life looks like and showing them how to be empowered and be in charge of their life. I will see you next week when I talk with Carolyn Hauser Carter all about vibration. It's a great topic. I love it. And until then, make it a great week. And don't forget, head over to vibranthappywomenclub.com and join us in the club. Doors will close in a week. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Vibrant Happy Women podcast at www.jenriday.com.